I'm going to talk about recycling at home just a little bit, so just to get some clarification on it. And then I'm also going to uh, talk about how you're recycling at the county and why it's different, why they set it up different, and, and can there be some additions and, and, and how you might do that. So who is the Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District? We are an educational and planning agency. Uh, we service all 59 communities. Uh, we help individuals, businesses, and municipalities reduce, reuse, recycle at home, at work, and within their community. I have outlined the things that would basically most concern you. For example, business recycling assistance. I go into the commercial and industrial sector. I go into nonprofits, and if they want to set up a recycling program and waste reduction program, uh, our consulting is free, and I can walk them through how to do that, help them uh, find uh, somebody or a company to pick up their recyclables, and. Uh, provide education and literature about how to uh, you know set up the bins and where to get bins and, and basically handhold if I need to uh, to set up the program so public outreach and education I'm here I'm free I'm here <laughs> we are here as a county agency we do go out and uh, give presentations with regards to recycling and waste reduction uh, throughout the community and through businesses and of course here today grants if you know anybody that works for a nonprofit or a school most schools are nonprofits uh, the nonprofits schools universities are eligible for what's called our recycling container grant and uh, it's about three thousand dollars up to three thousand dollars per grant uh, that you can get $3,000 per organization. Uh, the applications are coming out within a couple weeks and they'll be due, I believe, on February 3rd of next year. It's for either recycling and or composting equipment. Don't be angry because you can't recycle as much as you used to. You probably have found out that you can't be putting those, um, uh, what do you call it, those uh, clamshells and coffee cups and that plastic cup. You <laughs> can't put that in. Right, well, yeah. So, um, you can't, can't put recycle that? Pardon me? Oh. No. So, let's talk about what you can recycle. Okay. Basically, if you're holding it in your hand, it's got to fit into one of these five categories. It's got to either be some sort of a can, except for an aerosol can. We cannot put the aerosol cans, uh, even if they're empty, in our recycling. So, a steel can. Uh, or an aluminum can, whether it's sardines, whether it's a uh, can of corn, can of beans, uh, what else comes in a can? Cat food, dog food. Yes? How come you can't recycle like an aerosol can? Is it because of the content or is it because it's dangerous if it can explode? Um, even if they're empty, um, they're, it's just not something that the material recovery facility wants. To be able to market it, there's different I don't know how many grades of steel there are, uh, but what's marketable is what's up here. So if you don't see it, they don't either have the equipment to process it or they can't market it. And that's how we ended up with these categories. And these have been tried and true, even through all the recycling changes. So, um, cans. Uh, if you're holding it in your hand, it's a can. <coughs> you can make sure it's empty and rinsed and clean. Um, if it's something that you've uh, opened the can and you can put the lid inside, you don't have to worry about taking off paper, but it has to be clean and you can put it in your, uh, your recycling bin. Cartons, that could be a wine carton, a juice carton, uh, a broth carton. Um, what else comes in a carton? Half and half. Uh, milk at school comes in a carton. Carton has to be empty, rinse, cap put back on. If you can't remember to put the cap back on, throw the cap out. It's those loose caps. It's the loose caps that really cause problems at these facilities because they get jammed in the equipment, they fall into the glass and contaminate everything. So either put caps on things or throw the caps out, one or the other. Glass bottles and jars, food grade, jar jelly, uh, jar pickles, uh, you know, what else comes in glass bottles, wine, things like that. Does uh, color matter? Uh, no. Color is not, does not matter. 
Um, paper and boxes. Some people get confused on this. I want to tell you not to put napkins and paper towels and anything you're blowing your nose in or wiping your hands in. That's not the paper that they're looking for. They're looking for what comes in your mail. Uh, that kind of paper, even catalogs you can put, and phone books you can put in your recycling. Even the, um, the envelopes with those windows, those are okay as well. But none of that, uh, no Tyvek envelopes because those aren't paper. None of the, um, if, if you see manila envelopes with uh, bubble wrap in them, that's, that's not something they want. File folders are okay if you take that metal piece out. File folders would be okay. Um, but really it's, they're kind of looking for what's coming in, what's coming in the mail. Uh, office paper is very, very valuable. I would assume here in this building, most likely everything is getting shredded. Um, and your shredding companies, all of them are recycling the paper automatically. So you don't have to worry about that. The biggest change has been in plastic. Plastic bottles and jugs only. So if you're holding it in your hand, it's gotta be a plastic bottle or plastic jug. No more yogurt cups, no more clamshells. So what we're looking for is in your bathroom, you've got body wash, shampoo, conditioner, um, at your sink, you've got that soft soap. Even the pump is okay. It's just gotta be empty, rinsed, um, and put the, uh, the lid back on. Um, in your laundry room, if you use detergent that comes in a bottle, that's a great type of bottle. And like Woolite or fabric softener bottles, those are great. In your kitchen, <clears throat> you've got milk jugs. Um, if you use water bottles, we encourage you to re use a reusable one, but if not, uh, you know, bottles of water, <coughs> bottles of Pepsi, bottles of cola. Um, there are bottles of, uh, weird things come in bottles like Parmesan cheese, it's weird, <laughs> but it's considered a bottle. Uh, ketchup, mustard, um, things like that. Well, how is that different than like a big yogurt container? Uh, that would be, um, and that's an excellent question. A yogurt container is not a bottle, it's a tub. A tub. Yeah, so it's not a bottle. A tub doesn't have a neck. Most bottles have a neck. And we like to say, if it has a neck on it, it's okay. But these are the high value items. That's why anything up here are the high value items. So they're not taking those tubs because they used to, and right now it doesn't quite have the value. <clears throat> so if I, like I said in the beginning, if it doesn't fit in that category, don't put it in your bin because it doesn't have the value that it used to. They can still process it, okay. um, but they don't have any place to sell it to, okay. or there's very little market for it. And that's where recycling is, it's market driven. It's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. We are here today in Oberlin, Ohio at Republic Services. We're talking with Dan Shavey. Dan, you guys are doing recycling here. Tell us a little bit about what happens when the trucks come in right here at the beginning. Sure. Well, what happens is they dump their vehicles or they pick the material up out on the route, and then we take and load it into our system, which sorts it with manpower and also uh, the equipment itself. So you've got like machines that do some of the sorting, but you also have people on the line that are, that are hand sorting things. Yes, there's over 30 sorters that physically take material that we don't want on the belts off. So every contaminant that gets put into the system, we physically have to touch. Talk a little about these contaminants, because I know it's a problem for you guys. Uh, what kinds of items are you not looking to, to have people put in their recycling? Sure, some things that have actually caused injury and a lot of damage to our equipment is scrap steel lawnmower blades, car parts, things of that nature. We really don't want in your toter cart. You also don't like things like ropes, right? And, and things that get people entangled or, or needles or sharps. Correct, and we do get that material. Garden hoses, we get on average 30 a day. We get a bowling ball a day, believe it or not. Tennis shoes, clothing, textiles. Those are all things that cause wrapping and cause us downtime. Now on the other hand, what can be recycled? What kinds of items do you like to see in here? Well, actually, the majority of what you have in your home, we, we can take. You know, your pop bottles, your, your uh, cartons, aseptic containers, aluminum cans, of course, steel cans, newspaper, junk mail, um, cardboard. A lot of the things you'll see in these piles, it's good stuff, but there's a lot of things that are harming the recycling industry, but when you're putting it in your toter. And if people have questions, they can go to CuyahogaRecycles.org, of course, because they, they tell you exactly 
piece by piece what you can recycle. Exactly. That's a great idea. Please go there, use those resources, and, and do the right thing and recycle the right way. Hey, Dan, thanks so much for taking time here. It looks like you guys are quite busy. Oh, yeah, we get 300 tons in a day through the facility. Yeah, it, it keeps us busy. We're always kind of cleaning up a mess. <laughs> thanks for taking a few moments. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland. So you can see how fast those belts move and if there's too many contaminants on them, how difficult it is for them to take things off. And sometimes if there's just too much contamination, they might refuse truckloads of materials. So that's why it is so important to make sure that you only recycle the categories of items that we talked about and that they're clean. Um, if you had uh, a half a bottle of Pepsi or Coke in there and it, you know, spilled, it's going to ruin all the paper and it's going to ruin everything else. So you want to make sure everything is, is as clean as possible. So what's in and what's out? Um, aluminum cans, steel cans, those are in. We don't want to see, uh, sometimes we'll see um, pie plates, aluminum foil, uh, other types of things. <laughs> Those things can go to scrapyards if you're a metal collector, you know one. That kind of stuff could go to a scrapyard. Um, you don't have to take the paper off the cans. You can just make sure they're rinsed uh, and put the lid inside. And if you can't remember to put the lid inside, throw the lid out. Just don't have a lid hanging out, a sharp lid hanging loose. Does it matter, do they prefer that one way or the other that we or off. Yeah, the reason we say lid on is because people would either put the caps in loose or they would put the caps on and they would be loose themselves and then they would pop out and make a mess. So it doesn't, what matters is you do one or the other. Either you throw out the caps or you put the caps on tight. Yes. But like the little jars of cat food that have that peel back lid, are those lids recyclable too? Put the lid inside the Okay. Just not hanging. Like right. Okay. Right. You don't want to know how many cats I have because I fill a 55 gallon uh, bag with cat food. Yeah. Things. Right. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Um, what's out? Yes. Don't put propane tanks. Propane tanks can go back to Blue Rhino. People are putting, we talked about the aerosol cans and all the weird metals. Uh, just make sure those don't go in there. Different types of cartons, um, easily recyclable. And some of those you might say, well, they're, they're, they have all those different layers, like the Tetra Packs, they've got a metal layer, they've got seven different layers, including like a metal layer inside. And you're like, well, how do they recycle those? And I did ask, they don't know how, when they're baled and sorted and sent to a uh, processor, how they separate the layers, but they're able to and that they can make toilet paper and paper towels uh, is, is mostly what you make out of cartons. Yes? Okay, this might be a stupid question, but whenever I have like one of those, um, like it might be like soup broth or something, mm -hmm. and I try to rinse it out, I feel like I'm not getting all the rinse out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like the oily thing. <laughs> yeah, you just do the best you can. Okay. Yeah, do the, just do the best you I can. Thought, should I cut it open and rinse it really well? If you can, it? that would that would be awesome. It's don't just flatten just it, yeah. Just, yeah. just don't flatten it okay. because the equipment that reads the cartons is reading it 3D. Yeah. And if you flatten the carton, it can't easily get red. And then you're going to say to me, well, why can't we recycle these? Why can't we recycle freezer boxes? They've got the same kind of coating or a similar coating as the cartons. These are not three-dimensional and the facilities here locally don't have the ability to sort those out. I think some other states do have the ability to sort those out, but we don't have that ability here. Uh, and the market is not leaning in that direction. The recycling markets have crashed and we'll talk about that. Um, glass bottles, jars, easy. Um, if you break a drinking glass, throw it out. They're just looking for the food grade. Yes, the um, Pyrex, no, those are no's. 
Uh, again, we're just looking for what's in your refrigerator mostly with regards to glass or what's in your cupboard. Caps on, if you can remember, if not, throw them out, or you can donate them to Upcycle Parts Shop on St. Clair Avenue. If you've ever heard of Upcycle Parts Shop, uh, they are a shop that uh, sells all kinds of uh, individual things to, to make arts and crafts with, and they teach these classes as well. And they're all recycled. Mm -hmm. It's all recycled materials. Yes, yeah. yes. Great. So, it answers a lot of questions. If you take the cap off, you either go to Upcycle Parts Shop, make something with the cap, or throw it out. I, Aveda used to have a cap program, but I think that they discontinued that, uh, collecting caps. Um, so that counts for beer bottle caps too? Um, those can go to Upcycle Parts Shop. I take mine to Upcycle Parts Shop. What so when you're opening a bottle of beer, it's got that metal cap on it. Either you throw it out or take it to Upcycle Parts Shop. Um, boxes. Um, I don't want people to get confused and think of because it's brown, it's a cardboard box. Like a tissue box and some of these other boxes, cereal boxes are made of brown paper. Those are, those are paper boxes. They're just brown paper boxes. Cardboard, what we're looking for for cardboard is uh, corrugated. <clears throat> Toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, easily recyclable, so don't forget to put those in. Shoe boxes, you can see all the different types of things. Empty tissue box, don't worry about taking the little plastic piece off the empty tissue box. It's just fine that way it is, throw it in. Uh, flatten it, please, if you can, oh. if it's paper. So here, um, new, newspaper's not as um, uh, popular as it used to be, meaning we don't have as much of it but there's still a demand for recycled newspaper. Uh, just, newspapers are more digital now than they used to be. Uh, shredded paper you cannot put in your recycling bin at home, uh, but you can recycle shredded paper at those green or green and yellow River Valley or uh, paper retriever uh, bins around town. Do these look familiar to you? If you're not sure where one is, you can call River Valley or, or uh, Royal Oak Recycling and get a location for one of these bins. Um, they don't really like cardboard, they like the paper. Even though it said cardboard on the bins, that's like an old logo. Uh, if you could flatten your cardboard boxes, that would be great. Um, this is because it takes up a lot of room otherwise. Pizza boxes. So. If a pizza box is greasy, you throw it out. Uh, if the bottom's greasy, but the top isn't, I tear my top off and throw the top in. And sometimes I have a completely clean pizza box and then I can recycle it. You can compost a uh, pizza box. I'm not sure at home, but commercial composting facilities can take greasy pizza boxes. Uh, so those can be composted commercially along with the food or leftover food. Water bottles are about the easiest thing uh, to uh, recycle, but I, I think only about between 20 and 30% of all the water bottles produced and used in the United States um, are getting recycled and, and we've just got to do better. This is uh, something that people really get confused on, these berry containers. Uh, either you reuse them or you throw them out. Now, if I were teaching you five years ago, I would tell you to put them in the bin. If I were teaching you five years ago, I would tell you to put a plastic McDonald's like shake cup or Starbucks, you know, cup in the bin. There is no cup in any way, shape or form that you can recycle locally, paper or otherwise. So this is one of the things that people really get confused on. This is what I was talking about in the refrigerator, ketchup, mustard, uh, things like that. Peanut butter is tough. If some people are putting their peanut butter jars in the dishwasher, get them clean. Sometimes I can't get them clean and I have to throw them out. If you can get it clean, great. If not, don't worry about it. We don't want you to be wish cyclers, putting something in and hoping it gets recycled. We really need to, to keep the stream clean. Five years ago, I would have told you to put these in the bin. These are tubs, they're small tubs. So <clears throat> even if you can recycle something, it's gotta be bigger than like two and a half inches. Um, these are tubs they don't have the value that they used to. So they don't want these things in anymore. And some of them were kind of on the small side anyway. 
So those little fruit cups and things like that, unfortunately, uh, you can't put in. And this is just showing you that you can, of course, recycle uh, detergent, empty detergent bottles. Lowe's does have a program in the summer. Uh, you may have to talk to five people before you um, convince them that they really do have a program because it took me about four or five people. Uh, I did call the sustainability director at corporate who uh, said that they do have a program, but there's sometimes miscommunication and people don't always know. They have so many locations. So um, I took my pots to and pots and entrees to Lowe's on Miles Road is the one that I used and they had um, uh, shelving where you could put your <coughs> empty, clean pots and trays. So you'd have to call your individual Lowe's location. If you're having trouble, when it comes time to plant, just call our office. Um, I may have to call corporate sometimes. This is the easiest thing to recycle. If you can put the cap on, fine. That little ring, you know, when you open it, there's like a little ring, just throw that thing out. Um, but either put the cap on or, or throw it out or donate it to Upcycle Parts Shop. Just don't put a loose cap in. These have never really been recyclable. The, the Solo Cups were like a maybe that they did used to take Solo Cups um, at the facilities. Uh, none of this, the forks have never been recyclable. Uh, straws, lids, things like that. You know, we don't just don't want to see those. Bags, take them to your retail stores. Uh, Giant Eagle likes the light colored bags. Giant Eagle will also take Ziploc bags. If they're clean, they'll take <coughs> cereal bags, bro uh, what's, what is it, dry cleaning bags. They're the only one I know that takes bubble wrap right now. Um, so there's the Giant Eagle um, bins have a display that tell you what types of plastic film they were, will take. I also want you to know that when you're buying toilet paper and paper towels, that has film on it, right? Take it back to Giant Eagle. They'll take that. Um, newspaper sleeves. You know, when you get your newspaper at home, take it back to Giant Eagle. Uh, the other grocery stores and some other places take paper uh, plastic bags as well, like Walmart, Target, Kohl's. Kohl's will take any bag. Macy's, I think, only wants their own bags. But just check online on their sites and then you can find out where to take your bags and, and plastic film. Food grade styrofoam has, and those styrofoam cups have never been recyclable uh, in our area. Other states, they have been. So they've never been recyclable in our area. The white block styrofoam used to be recyclable in our area at our facility because we had a, a company that would pick it up. They would process it. They would make 42 cents a pound when it, they made a brick out of it. Now they only would get 18, 19 cents a pound, which made it um, not economical for them to recycle it anymore. So there are places in central Ohio that will take even this kind of styrofoam and the white block styrofoam. It's just, there's nothing in our area. If you really, really want to get your styrofoam recycled, we have a business recycling directory and it lists places where if you know somebody who's got a truck and is backhauling something, something to Lancaster, Ohio, or the immediate area, there's a couple of places that will, uh, will take that. Um, yeah, please don't, um, these have to be in a, in a container. Needle, needles have to be in a container. They don't get recycled. Uh, you heard Dan say on the uh, video that um, they see needles in there. It's so dangerous. Uh, Make sure they're in jugs and they're marked sharps and then you put them in a box and you seal it and you mark it sharps. I found this during a waste audit, somebody's personal information and the pills that were inside the bottle. Uh, they just threw everything out. Please make sure you, before you throw anything out, take out your personal information. Uh, the police stations have drop boxes for medications. Um, we have one downstairs. And you have one downstairs at the Justice Center. Uh, and those pill bottles uh, can be taken to um, Upcycle Part Shop. And sometimes you can call a shelter, they may use them. Matthew 25 Ministries, you can, I have a box I collected. Matthew 25 Ministries in Cincinnati also takes those. I think they go to the third world countries. Uh, but please make sure that you don't have personal information in the trash. Can you recycle the pill bottles if you peel the sticker off? Not in our 
system that we have here. <clears throat> They're too small. Um, they really want the larger, the larger bottles. So they talked about tanglers in the video, as you know from what we just spoke about, that the um, broken or uh, holiday lights that you don't want anymore can be taken to our facility to get recycled. We have a company that comes, picks it up, and uh, shreds the um, holiday lights to get the copper wire out of them, basically. And please don't put hoses in recycling. How many of you compost at home? Anybody? All right, great. So um, compost at home if you can. We want people to stop using disposables as much as possible. Some of you bought, brought reusable containers today uh, and bottles that are reusable. So we want people to try to think uh, because sometimes um, a lot of trash gets produced that doesn't have to be produced if you're using something that might be reusable. Uh, some uh, corporations use reusable containers in their cafeteria instead of styrofoam and that their, their employees just bring the uh, clamshell back. It's a reusable clamshell and they just wash it and reuse it again. <clears throat> so we want you to be aware of this. We have these books and there were a few in the back. If you're moving, if you are moving, if you are cleaning out your house, garage, a room, just want to know where to donate jewelry, art supplies, office furniture, just about anything, paintings, uh, desks. Um, this book lists uh, the uh, donation places, nonprofits in our area, and what they will take and their phone numbers and addresses. Um, if you want one, I think there are a few that were in the back that if uh, anybody else wants one, they can call our office and we'll mail it to you. It's called Pass It On. Is it available online at all? It is available online. The updated version is online, but if you're like me and you like to <laughs> look at paper, uh, we're more than happy to mail you one. This is a great bin because it's color coded, has very simple messages on it, and would you agree that I know it's kind of you're kind of far from here that this is would be much easier to read. So this is the, what we encourage you these types of bins for recycling. We don't use the word trash anymore. We use the word landfill. These signs are from Recycle Across America. Um, recycling and composting and your uh, landfill material uh, all needs to be put in one place because no one's going to one end of the room and recycling their cans and then walking to put their trash at the other end. Convenience is key in getting a really good recycling program. The, uh, the staff knows what to do with your recycling. They've been trained. Uh, Lunch and Learn, we're having one right now as far as education goes. Uh, you can send out emails. You can send out, if you have newsletters, you've got uh, the court website that you talked about, that you're gonna have the video on. Let's set an example yourself. I went to do a recycling presentation for an apartment building and I walked into the office to say that I was here and I was ready. And the lady uh, who was the uh, property manager took a big pile of papers from her desk as she was talking to me and she put them right into the trash. <laughs> I said, what are you doing? <laughs> so, cause people are gonna look at her. So when you're out and about as a sustainability committee or someone who's involved in sustainability, set an example yourself. Continual education is needed. Employees come and go, they get promoted um, and recycling changes as well. This is our social media presence. It's pretty large. Okay, so where do I work? Where do I work? Someone tell me, where do I work? Oh, you, you already know. <laughs> Which organization do I work for? Yes, it's the Solid Waste District because people often get it wrong. I'm, in, I'm always introduced correctly, but at the very end, they can't quite remember to the point where when we gave a grant out for uh, recycling that they credited another institution for that grant. So I put this slide in now to make sure before I leave that you know where we came from, you know who to contact in case you have questions. 
Here is our address. We're located uh, in Garfield Heights off of Broadway and 480. Very convenient to get there. And any other questions at this time? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, so you were saying that um, they don't want really small items. So what about like those glass bottles that like essential oils come <clears throat> Is that too small or? Yes, it's too small. Yes, that's a good question. <clears throat> it's too small. Yeah, it's too small. Um, I think Upcycle Parts <laughs> Shop might like those. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my son, just to, uh, to go, go off that, had a unit on his school, mm -hmm. and they told him any piece of paper smaller than two by two should be there. Yeah, those, 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 so for example, if you have the paper that's either shredded or small, small paper can be collected and you can take them to those green or green and yellow bins. It's recycled differently. Because I know at school sometimes they're tearing up stuff. Uh, a lot of the schools have those paper bins. Yes, it's recycled differently. Yes, Darren. So my wife would yell at me, mm -hmm. get the tag off your dry clean, little paper tag, mm -hmm. and I throw in the trash. She's like, that's recyclable. I'm like, no. okay, I'm, I'm gonna actually win an argument. <laughs> and please, people are tearing up paper because they, they're tearing up paper and they're putting it in their recycling because they think it helps the recycling. The more you tear, the worse it is. The bigger the paper, the easier it is to sort. So don't tear any paper if you have to, because if it's got important information on it, it should be shredded to begin with. Uh, and if you have to tear something up, you're either gonna have to throw it in the trash or take it to one of those um, you know, paper bins that we talked about. Yes? So you said early on that if you have small appliances like a vacuum cleaner, you can take that to your office? To our office, yeah. Is there another place locally where no, that stuff is very <laughs> difficult to recycle, and um, we have like one or two companies that'll come and get it from us, but other than that, I started that program almost eight years ago when I started with the district. Um, it's been pretty popular because people are throwing, you know, you get a blender, it's broken, what else are you going to do with it? You can throw it out. Well, the plastic is not as easily recyclable, but the metal is and the cords are. So there are some pieces, but not the whole thing. So we would not want the glass part of a blender, and we would not want, like, if you had a coffee pot, we wouldn't want the glass coffee pot itself, because those that, that would not be recyclable so easily. So vacuum is mostly made out of plastic? <sighs> Unless you want to just give us the electric parts of it, most of it is not as easily recyclable. But yeah. Not most likely not. It's it's just it's pretty difficult. Um, it's the metal inside that has the value, and we definitely don't want smoke detectors. Um, wanted to make that clear. Uh, if it's not on this list, we don't want it. And with the personal care and beauty products, they have to be empty. Empty lipstick, empty um, mascara, empty compact. Uh, that all has to be empty. We'll take like if you have like hand cream. Uh, and it's things that come in smaller tubes, those tubes have to be empty. We don't want like, you know, deodorant. We don't want any deodorant stuff. We don't want toothbrushes. We don't want, uh, cause it says personal care products. We don't want toothbrush, empty toothpaste tubes. We don't want anything like that. It's really like the, um, if you have a compact or you've got some sort of cream uh, and it can't be, the makeup cannot be in glass. It has to be in a plastic. Yes. So I'm, I'm sorry. I just wonder with the drop offs, the hours are 8 30 to 4 30, and I assume that we're all here for 8 30 to 4 If you know somebody that's retired, or sometimes people have come in, yeah. <clears throat> some people have come in during lunchtime. Um, I know it's hard, but we're on county hours. <laughs> Got it. Okay. We're on county hours. Um, anything else? Yes. So I, I'm still a little confused as to why the freezer boxes are not recyclable, but like a cereal box is when like the size is sometimes about the same? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, because it's in the freezer, <clears throat> like the moisture from it? Those freezer boxes and any sort of boxed food that's like in the refrigerator or refrigerated section of a grocery store, it's just not something that they have the equipment to process. It's a different type of material. Yeah, there's so many different types of coatings on materials that they're, they could adjust their equipment but 
there's certain pieces of equipment that get installed to sort certain items. And we just don't. In this Northeast Ohio area, there are three sorting facilities. They're called material recovery facilities. One in Twinsburg, one in Akron, uh, one in Oberlin. And they just uh, they can't sort all the different you know, materials that you're talking about, the freezer boxes. And the market again, market um, is really <laughs> Uh, a big player. The market and what they can do is really a big player in what they want. Yes. So does this apply to all of co the county then? No matter where you live? Correct. So like I live in Cleveland, Correct. somebody else lives? Correct. Okay. Just wondering if that, because everybody's disagreeing with me on all these things that I'm telling them they can't recycle, you know? Yeah, they uh, they can't. They can't recycle they this stuff. they changed it, right? This has okay. changed at least three years ago. Okay, yeah. So, April 2016 is when we launched this campaign. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with all the changes in recycling, those five categories that we talked about today have remained steady. Okay. This is the stuff that's marketable, that um, through all, all the changes that have occurred, that they can actually sort. Okay. So China does not want certain things anymore from us because we sent them a lot of dirty stuff a long right, time ago. Right. We didn't clean out our yogurt tubs. Right, right. We didn't clean out the Cool Whip tubs. Right, right. We mixed in trash with a lot of the recyclables. And uh, there are there's still stuff going to China. It's just not from the uh, municipalities. That's not the curbside materials. It's more industrial. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that you have uh, a facility that is making something out of plastic and it's a pure material and it's injection molding and you've got all this plastic left over and you've got 40,000 pounds of it, there might be some place locally even that could process that or it could be shipped overseas uh, because it's pure and it's one type of plastic. Now plastic is not infinitely recyclable. Um, once it's molded a couple of times depending on what type it is, there are certain additives and chemical things you can do to it to make other products but after a while, you know, there's nothing you can do to certain plastics anymore. Sure. Um, in aluminum and glass, aluminum cans and glass bottles are infinitely recyclable. Okay. Yes. Is there any <clears throat> looking to the future mm -hmm. uh, potential for an uptick in recycling uh, beyond where it, because we're, we seem to be on this downgrade? Right. So in Wapakoneta, <coughs> Ohio, a uh, paper processing plant just opened, thank goodness. So we have more ability now to process paper. Um, a lot of recycling plants in the United States have closed and uh, people from China have come in and bought some of these plants and are going to be, what they're gonna be recycling, we don't exactly know everything, but uh, we suspect that it's, because a lot of the Amazon boxes uh, come from China, um, that they may want to be recycling cardboard and sending it back over there. Uh, so we suspect that that's what they're going to start with. It's, I think it's gonna take another four or five years to get all those plastic items that we used to, like the clamshells and the yogurt cups and all that, to be able to recycle those items again. Um, but this stuff has to be really, really clean. If you had yogurt cups and you had 40,000 pounds of them and they were completely clean because they were off spec from the manufacturer that made the yogurt cups, um, you can recycle those yogurt cups all day long. Put them in a truck and ship them somewhere to get recycled. It's just the curbside stuff that there's, there's a problem with because it's got to get sorted out. Anything else? Do many of the cities do their own recycling and then send it, I mean, own sorting and then send it? No, out? no. Does. There's three sorting facilities in the area. Like I said, Oberlin, um, Waste Management in Akron, and Kimball over in Twinsburg. Uh, the cities either have their own trucks and pick up their own uh, trash and recycling and take it to, they have a contract with, with whichever facility, or they privately contract with uh, one of the municipal haulers, one of the haulers, local haulers, that will take it back to their facility. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Well, thank you. Thank you. Sure, call if you have questions.